think it's uh, 30 years this week since you made your Middlesbrough debut. Um, and I just wanted to look back, first of all, coming up from your native Oxford up to Middlesbrough. It must have been a massive decision in your life, but did you ever see it having the kind of impact on your career that, that it did? I didn't. No, I didn't. Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't even know where Middlesbrough was. You know, I, I, I knew it was, a, it was a bigger club than Oxford United. Um, but at that age, you know, I, I'm just focused on playing. I'm a professional player. It's like it's my, top, my hometown club. And then, you know, the, the news comes that they agreed a fee with Middlesbrough Football Club. I didn't even know where it was. I had to look on a map. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, from, from meeting Colin Todd uh, about halfway in a, in a hotel lobby to chat about it, to my dad driving me up when I'd agreed to sign up to, to, uh, up to Teesside and up on that A19 and driving up there. And then you see all the ICI stuff. And like, it was, it was a big, it was a big, uh, big step. But it was never, I mean, I was always going to do it. I was always ambitious and wanted to progress. And I knew that the club was a, was a bigger club um, than, than Oxford. But I didn't, you know, you can't think about where it could lead to. Um, and it was such a great ride uh, from start to finish, really, that I, you know, I, I, I do hang out with former players and stuff and, there's definitely a situation where a lot of players have regrets and uh, could have done this and could have done that. And if I didn't have this injury or that injury, I have, I'm so lucky that I have no regrets, nothing that I look back and think if, and I'd done something different or made different decisions. So, um, wow, it was a decision. That, I mean, I, you know, who knows, maybe I'd go somewhere else and maybe I'd have a, you know, a long career like I did at Middlesbrough, but um, God, what a, what a good decision it was. And, and it's the reason why I'm, here in America. I have a brilliant job in America talking about football, Premier League football every weekend uh, for the national broadcaster NBC here. So yeah, a lot, lot to thank Middlesbrough for. Um, my kids were born there. Uh, my son's just had his 25th birthday, the same as the Riverside Stadium. So yeah, I, I, I mean, in, in a summary, God, what a, what a brilliant decision it was. Um, and uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. It's interesting because we've had some stuff in like the local media this week about how you know, the geography of where Middlesbrough is that you touched on there, it is a factor for, for players coming up and signing for Middlesbrough. Um, but for you, there must have been a sense that, um, you said about Middlesbrough being a, a bigger club than Oxford, but there must have been a sense that the club had potential as well to, to go from, from where it was at that time. Yeah, yeah, the, the potential was there. But if I'm being totally honest, as a 21-year-old, or was I 20 or 21 at that point, I didn't know enough. I didn't know enough. I didn't know. And you'd be shocked at the amount of the young players all around the country that don't know much about other clubs or other regions or other areas. So I can't sit here and lie to you and say that I knew that Middlesbrough was going to do this and do that and had the potential to do it. I didn't. I didn't know about the history. I didn't know about the, the, the 70s team or I didn't know much about Ayrson Park. I didn't as a young player. Um, so it, 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 I, it, it wasn't. I knew it was a bigger club. I knew it was a, a, a great move for me professionally to go and do that. I didn't know where it was. I f quickly figured out where it was in the country. It's a long way away from Oxford, home. Okay. I mean, it's, a f what, four hours in a car? It's not, not a big deal, particularly when you live, live in the United States where, you know, that's like, that's just down the road, four hours. So, um, no, I, I, I can't say that I, I foresaw any, any kind of future things at the club uh it was as simple as this is a step up it's a bigger club i want to i want to make it happen there's, there's a generation of middlesbrough fans who who sadly never went to Ayrson park now that's myself included um i was wondering if you could sum up for me what that ground was like um because you know the stories you hear of it it, it, it sounds like an incredible place to play your football Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, uh, it was, I mean, it was everything to me, really, going from, again, a small um, manor ground in Oxford to what, for me, was like a, a big stadium and an historic stadium. Um, and just, I just have very strong memories of parking the car in the, in the, in the little schoolyard that was next and going through those big gates, famous red gates there, and, and, and I'm walking into the stadium. Um, yeah, I, I it, the whole gate end and scoring in there. And I, I'm unfortunately, maybe a lot of players will say the same thing. You remember the bad times. I remember I scored an own goal 
right there in front of the whole gate with Steve Pears in goal. I think it was a corner. I think it was, uh, it was against Portsmouth and Stuart Ripley tried to clear the ball. I tripped. I was right on the near post. Like the post is on my left-hand side here. I try and clear it with my left foot. I miss it. It hits my stand leg and goes in the back of the net. And Steve Pears has given me a hard time right in front of the whole gate, which are about f- five yards away. So, um, oh God, yeah. I mean, so many great memories and so much, so much nervousness about me at that point. You know, again, a young player coming into this club and this stadium and, and seeing... Big support, really. I mean, 18, 20,000 around that time. Then the manor ground, I didn't even know what it was. Half of that. Um, so, yeah, it, 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 everything about it, from, from the team bath, I mean, like, you know, a thing of the past, like in the dressing rooms there and the doctors of physio. I just remember everything about it vividly. I remember uh, the, kit, the kit staff, brilliant smudger. I remember Tony Mowbray was, was, loved this, this old kit fella called Smudger. Always there, laying the kit out. Uh, just, just wonderful people. I remember the players' lounge and the people in the players' lounge that were so nice to me and my family when the family come and visit, watch us play at Essen Park. I mean, everything about it was just real. From the fans outside that want your autographs every single time you walk in from the car park into through the gates. Um, I, I, I just, you know, I know that the fans were very sad to leave that place. I read some tweets this week actually about... Um, the feeling that they had from, because of course the Riverside birthday, 25 years, et cetera, same as my Elliot, um, and how sad it was to leave Ayrson, but how amazing it was to go to the Riverside. But I have, I have very strong memories of both grounds, to be honest with you. And um, I, I just felt nerves at that point. That's the start of my career. You know, the Middlesbrough fans are seeing me, this young kid from Oxford um, for the first time. And, and I was just anxious to play well, to do my, the best that I could. I think the game that I probably remember most or with most affection is Newcastle, is Newcastle. My first big derby against Newcastle. It was in the League Cup. I think it was called the Rumbelows Cup back then. And we won 2-0 and I scored two goals. I scored both goals. And that kind of like, wow, you know, I, 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 I belong here. I can do well here. At that point, I was signed to, to get in the box and try and get a few goals, which I did. Um, but that was, that was a really good memory of... of taking a couple of goals against Newcastle. And then, um, you know, I thought, well, that's, that's OK. I'm sure the fans are going to like me for a little bit, at least. Just before we come on to moving to the Riverside, which you've, you've sort of touched on a bit there, um, what was it like when Brian Robson came into the club? Because obviously you'd had, you'd had a few managers in Middlesbrough. You'd had Lenny Lawrence, of course, and the promotion, and then coming back down from the Premier League. When Brian Robson came in, for, for a midfielder such as yourself, it must have been like, mm-hmm. you know, a legend walking among you, really. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. Again, some moments that, that, that we'll all remember in our lives and him walking into the meeting room at Ayrson Park uh, as a new manager. I mean, it, it, it was a shock. It wasn't one of those where it just wasn't one of those where we were sure who was going to walk in. And with him walking in, oh, I mean, you know, it, it sounds cliched and um, forced, but, but he was a, a, a midfield player that I looked up at to more than anybody else, really, and just in terms of what he could do as a midfield player. Every part of it, every part of it, from defending, from tackling, from passing, to, to obviously getting the goals and, the, and the, the captaincy part of it and England national team and everything else. I mean, he would have been the guy that I would have loved to walk in that door, and he did walk in the door. And, you know, there's always uncertainty about what is he going to do? I know he's, he was in as a player coach, so I'm thinking, hmm, probably gonna, he's probably going to might play in my spot for a little while, which he did initially um but i got a very big boost of confidence from him and, and you see it now with with the modern day game and managers dealing with players he pulled me in in the first couple of weeks in his office and said robbie i want i want you here i want you around i really like what you do you're going to be a big part of my midfield going forward i can't play forever he's saying um and it was at that time it was jamie pollock really and myself and brian robson really the main central guys Robbo obviously started and, and was incredible to watch, play and train. And I, and I always say it, you know, I, I probably learned more about midfield play watching and being around Brian Robson than, than anything else in the game. Just watching his professionalism, his training habits, his desire, his, his intensity in training was like, wow, kind of stuff. And I remember one game he played at Ayrson Park, he went in for a challenge with a goalkeeper, aerial challenge that that I'm like, you know, everybody's looked away, he comes off, he's got, he's got a big scar on his head now, blood's all over the place. I mean, he just, I mean, he, he, 
Yeah, I mean, for, for him to say to me that I, I want you around, he gave me a new contract because Lenny Lawrence wasn't, Lenny Lawrence bought some other players. He didn't always play me Lenny Lawrence, um, which was frustrating at the time. In fact, my contract was running down. I had a three-year contract assigned with Colin Todd, three-year contract. And the last year of my contract, Lenny Lawrence was the manager. And he, he was kind of delaying on, on new contracts for me. And I, and I just felt a little bit... Uh, a bit worried about my future at the club at that point. And then of course he left, Brian Robson came in, gave me, gave me that kind of vote of confidence and then never looked back. Yeah. He, 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 he was of course with Steve Gibson taking full control at that time was the catalyst to everything that we, we see going forward in the, in the Riverside stadium and the players and the runs and everything else. But yeah, for, to, to get him, Steve Gibson was, that was impressive. And to, 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 to be around the guy was, was pretty amazing. The first match at the Riverside Stadium, uh, obviously an incredible experience and an incredibly ex an incredible memory for you personally as well. Yeah, I mean, of course, the, the club were desperate to get into the Premier League for that that season, and um, we achieved that under Brian Robson. Uh, great season at Ayrson Park, great way to sign off at Ayrson Park with promotion. But we're all super excited for the Riverside Stadium, and of course, the. the I think the first home game was delayed because the stadium wasn't ready. So we played a few away matches at that point. But yeah, special, special day. Me and Jamie Pollock played in midfield. Um, Chelsea strong, strong Chelsea side as normal. We beat them 2-0. Uh, Craig Kignett scores the first goal. Fyotov scores the second goal. Two guys that I am still in contact with a little bit. So that's nice. And yeah, just a, just a, a marvellous day. Couldn't have gone any better. Packed house. I think fans loving the stadium. Pitch in amazing condition. Uh, so yeah, big celebrations afterwards. And then, you know, we, me and Jamie Pollock, um, agreed to go out and meet for dinner that night with, uh, with Caroline, my wife and Nikki, his girlfriend, I think it was a pub in Wolverston near Wynyard where I lived and Caroline probably had about two weeks to go, um, pregnant with our first child. And we'd had a couple of pints, we had a nice dinner and Caroline started to feel a bit funny, bit, bit, bit strange since she said, we, we probably should go home. So I jumped in the car, went back home. Um, I think Caroline at this point is saying, like, my waters are broken. We've we got, got to get to the hospital. Um, and yeah, we got to North Tees. Uh, Caroline in, in real discomfort, real pain as we go up the, the lift. Um, and yeah, Elliot was born 20 minutes after that. So really, really fast. I think a week or two earlier. But what a day. I mean, what, what a day that was, really. The new stadium opens. We're fresh into the Premier League. First home uh, game of that season. And then Elliot born that night, um, 26th of August, 1995. So a very special day for us, for the club, for my boy Elliot, who is still a mad Borough fan. He really is here in the US. And you guys have kindly sent over a, uh, a team shirt for this season, which is really good for him. His, his birthday He's actually, we're going to see him tonight he's been away with his buddies his college buddies for his to celebrate his birthday over at the Hamptons a very uh, you know they've rented a house and stuff and I'm sure he's had a great time but yeah we're gonna give him that shirt uh, and yeah it's just a very special day I mean Elliot again follows it very very closely been frustrated over the last couple of seasons a few seasons he's frustrated now he wants more signings coming in but no um, brilliant brilliant day I'll never forget that day it's funny that um, I was uh, listening to an interview with Craig Hignett um, just just yesterday, and he was saying that when he scored that first goal, it was when he went in at half time that it was you who said to him, you know, you lucky so and so because you you're part mm -hmm. of history now. And perhaps in that moment, he didn't he didn't realise just the, the the you know the magnitude mm -hmm. of that, and that he'll be thinking about that for the for yeah. the rest of his life. And I guess it's the same for you because like you know what an incredible day in your life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely was, and it's funny because I. You know, because of the anniversary, the goal was out there on social media and I, and I watched it again, or the two goals, and uh, I watched Craig score. And I, I, I'm thinking exactly the same thing right now. D he didn't realise. He, 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 it was a normal kind of, a Craig, it was a Higgy celebration. Uh, and I'm thinking he, he, in his brain, he doesn't he don't quite, and, you know, I don't think he fully grasped at that time is, is what he's obviously said there, of how big that goal was. I mean, legendary status to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, and yeah, yeah, and I got as well. And uh, I think Barnby was in that team, wasn't he? And Barnes was involved there as well. So we had a good side there, by the way. I, I really, of all the teams, and I get asked a question about, 
you know, who I like to play with in midfield and, and teams and stuff. And I'm sure we'll get on to what happened after this, that season. But I tell you what, I didn't have love that team. I didn't have love the mentality of that team with a little bit of flair from Hignett and Barmby and, and Fjortov is a, is a really good number nine that scored goals. And, and playing alongside Jamie Pollock, I got to say that's the most probably exciting. I remember Robson saying to us, you know, people don't know about you two. And, and, you, and you, you're good enough to, to take, not, maybe not the Premier League by storm, but you're going to surprise a lot of midfield players of what you can do in there and your energy and your determination. And, I, and I'd say that that period, and probably it wasn't a long period, Jamie ended up kind of moving. And, and, and I don't know, the Bosman thing was kicking on and he had a opportunity to move. But those, those games, and maybe a season or two with Jamie in the middle of midfield, I probably enjoyed more than anything else because we were very similar. He was a good player, Jamie Pollock. And I don't know what the reputation is around the club and the town, but he, he couldn't love the club anymore. He couldn't be a braver midfield player. He, he had the same kind of bravery that Robson had and toughness. He was physically more powerful probably than I was. I was, the, yeah, I was an engine, so I could run up and down. I'd cover the ground. And, and if, I had to, if there's a runner going in the box, I'd track him. Jamie, I mean, but, but Jamie could tackle and he could challenge. And he, and he was better on the ball than people imagined. Um, you know, so I love playing with Jamie. I've, I love playing with him. Um, really, really good player. I just think he, leaving the, the club when he did, I, I'm not saying it was a mistake, but I'd love to play with him longer. Let me put it that way. I love playing with him. And I, and I played, as we'll probably talk about, with, with a ton of, of very, very good international central midfield players. But I, I enjoyed Jamie more than any of them, I would say, at that time when we were young, hungry, and wanted to attack the Premier League. I think it's testament to that, uh, to the partnership you mentioned and the players that you had that, you know, the first half of that season, in particular, the first one at the Riverside, incredible form for Middlesbrough. Um, and then, of course, it's that season when Janino comes in and he, I think he's probably the symbol as much of it as, as anything of, you know, things got a bit crazy for Middlesbrough over those next couple of years, really. The players that we brought in, mm. uh, mad to look back on, really. Mm. Yeah, but 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 tremendous to look back on in different ways. I mean, I I and I and that's why it's nice to talk about that team for that first season. We did pretty well, and I know we're going to benefit from the euphoria of promotion. I talk about this all the time on our air in the US about promoted teams coming into the Premier League. That 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 kind of feel good factor from the season before is absolutely still with you. And for us, that first season, it was right through October, November. It starts to drift a little bit. Um, but but then yeah then 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 Steve Gibson wants to take it to another level, and and then we get those signings to come in, and things change at the club. And wow, I mean you know that the, the season that that we all talk about um, was an unbelievable one. But to see Ravenelli, who I'd saw score in a Champions League final, was it that that summer or the summer before? Really recently, Ravenelli coming in, and then Janino, which which you know in them days you didn't. You, you didn't see a ton of young Brazilian player that was just coming onto the national team with Brazil uh, and Emerson as well, particularly those three, of course, you know, it changed us. It changed us in many, many ways and, and trying to get to a different level um, with the cup runs and the struggles in the league. I mean, there's too much, it's just too much to talk about. I mean, it's like, I mean, there is a book and a friend of mine here, Stuart Flaherty, he's, uh, he's coaching at Dartmouth. University, which is an Ivy League school here. Massive Borough fan. I've met him. I went up there to, 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 to meet him and see him. He's just giving me the book. You're joking, aren't you? The book. Um, so I'm going to read that. And that's about this, this current season. Very, very interested to know what the author has got in terms of the details of that season. Um, but yeah, things changed. Things changed. And, and in terms of my own game, um, it, it had to adapt and had to change. And if, if people kind of say, I guess my biggest asset would have been my adaptability that in one word i think is is the reason that i was i played nearly 600 professional games in, in total that i stayed around this football club when it was was shooting for for the stars literally um and that's what i that's what i had to do it, it, it changed between a partnership with me and jamie pollock to well janine was ahead of me emerson's to the side of me you know, someone's got to sit here. Someone's got to sit and do a little bit of chasing back. The balance of the team had totally shifted. I talk about, again, that all the time in, 
in some of our shows and some of our breakdowns, you know, the, the team balance is, is, is critical. And when you look at the modern Liverpool team, it's perfectly balanced between attacking players that bring the flair and the creativity and the goals to those midfield players, I mean, you know, Henderson and Juan Aldum and others in there that, that do the engine part of it. And they'll never get forgotten, lost on me, because it's an incredible part of it. So, so yeah, I adapted in that team to be that guy. And, and luckily, Brian Robson appreciated that, needed that. And that was, again, another reason why I stayed around that team as, it, as we did some pretty amazing things in the Cups. Yeah, obviously, as you say, I can see the shirt behind you there with the FA mm. Cup final, the League Cup final as well. Mm. Um, a season of incredible highs and, and obviously devastating lows at times as well. But to 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 lead the the club into those first major trip finals is right up there in terms of your career achievements. Yeah, yeah, and and um, you know, I sometimes get a little, I, I I get a little frustrated when certain players in certain competitions like won't won't pick up their runners up medal i love my i got three runners up medals two league cup finals and an fa cup final i i, I have them in my i have them a, a foot away from my head when i sleep every night in my sock drawer so i i love i love those medals i love the cup runs some of the, the teams we had to beat to get to those and i know there's some some weird and wacky games with stockport and chesterfield etc cetera, etc cetera. but but to, to play in a wembley cup final you know, it, it was absolutely was the dream. It was the dream for me. And in the FA Cup final, which turned it out to be, I say, I say it's kind of the best day of my football in life and the worst day of my football in life because of what happened. And I had a bad injury, actually. I had quite a bad cartilage injury in that game after 20 or so minutes. But to walk out in the FA Cup final, when I, when, when, when I sat with my brother and my dad as a young boy watching that game and we'd go outside and kick a ball around to play, or to, to walk out in that stadium with those that atmosphere and our, and our fans to the right hand side and family and stuff watching is pretty special, pretty special. Um, the game wasn't too special for us. And, you know, you get into your regrets. Uh, well, regrets. I, I, you know, I can't help my knee blowing out like that, but, but yeah, they, they were, Chelsea were, were a very expensive Chelsea, a very good Chelsea. And, and they beat us the, the year after in the league cup as well. We weren't at quite at their level at that point. And a one-off game at Wembley, um, was too much for us. But no, to get to two cup finals is pretty amazing. Um, I mean, the, the, you know, the league campaign, we struggled with that balance I've just talked about. We did. And people and Ravinelli, I mean, can talk about the defensive side of our game. It's a team game. And you attack as a team and you defend as a team. Or, or, you know, since those days, you know, I've I study the game. I watch it. Since retiring, I've worked, coming to the US, I've worked in TV here and analyzing games and commentating on games. And I've always been a thinker with, with football. And the balance of that team was enough skewed to attack. And it wasn't a lot of defensive nous in it as well. So we, we struggled in the league campaign, obviously. The three points deducted at Blackburn was pretty bad call. Pretty bad call not to go to Blackburn that day. And, and I'll be, and it, it, in fact, I just don't accept that as a relegation against me because what we did on the field was enough. What, what we did was enough to stay in the league. The, the club's decision not to go there is what cost us promotion, obviously. Um, and then on the back of, of the cup runs, the amount of games we had in the last few weeks, I remember, was, was scandalous, really. Like we were playing, I think we were playing like Thursday, Sunday, Tuesday. I mean, we had so many games because we got in the cup, the cup finals and we had replays and two-legged games and stuff. So it was, it was all too much for us at the end and Leeds United away um, was probably the most painful day in my career and the emotions that day of, of relegation after what we had in the dressing room and the staff that we had and the road to get there was, was devastating. That's the worst ever that I felt in, in, on a football pitch after a game. Um, but yeah, I mean, a season like no other, that, that, that my goodness, had, had everything good and bad. Um, but it still was fun to play with Janino and to watch Emerson, who I, you know, could have been such a, a brilliant player in general in his career. I mean, he was still great for us, but... You know, you t it takes all facets of a player to have a big, long career and to, and to reach your full potential. For me, Emerson never reached his full potential in his career. And I know he went on to other clubs and big clubs. But my goodness, he was talented and strong and, and skillful. 
I mean, it's so great that, that Middlesbrough fans got to see him as well as Janino. We all know about Janino. Janino is still the best player that I ever played with in terms of what he did for my football club um, and what he brought to the team and et cetera, et cetera. But Emerson was enough good. Blimey, some of his moves and his little dummies and his fakes and his power. Um, so, and Ra- I mean, Ravinelli, what a player he was too. You know, he, he put everybody on edge a little bit because of the the standards that you wanted from everybody, from from everything we did, from where we trained to where we stayed to what we ate to how we played to how we set up. He was he he just demanded the very best. And I've seen a, I've seen some things written from Ravinelli about me, which is really nice. We got on okay. We got on okay. Did I like him going away with the national team with Italy and saying stuff about? my team and my defenders, my buddies, Steve Vickers and Derek Whites and different players that I love the bits. Didn't like that. Um, I don't like that about players, you know, and maybe there's some kind of misinterpretation when, when players went away. We had it a lot of Middlesbrough, unfortunately. Players going away and, and, and stuff getting um, translated a bit poorly. But I, but I loved his professionalism. I loved his ability. I loved his, you know, his serious nature. And he never smiled at the training ground. It's work for him. And I, I, I can accept that. I appreciate that. I love the attitude. You know, that's just the way he was. But what a good player. What a goal scorer. Great to play with. And he, he expected and wanted 100% professionalism from everybody in that dressing room. And it wasn't always there. You know, a squad of 25, in a squad of 25 British players around that time, there's going to be one or two that, but mess around a little bit and don't dedicate themselves as much as others. And that's what tore him apart. And that's what frustrated him. Um, but, but he knew with me, I was with him and I, and I was going to be dedicated and I was going to put the work in and I was going to train properly every single day and we got on fine. But uh, yeah, those three players added so much, so much to the club in terms of kudos, in terms of, you know, where the club was trying to go. And as a cup team, we were pretty good. We were pretty good. Three major cup finals in two seasons um, was, was tremendous memories. Now, did I walk around Wembley Stadium so many times, like in disappointment and clapping the fans because of their incredible support and loyalty? And, and as a player, you feel devastated that you can't give them that historic first major trophy. That's all that was in my my heart and mind into those finals is that I can make history here. And it's... um. It, 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 it truly is devastating when you can't do that for the fans that have supported so vehemently for so long to try and do that. So that, that, that's the toughest bit. And all we can say at the time is sorry. And we, you know, we weren't good enough at that time. Um, but I'm not sure I've got regrets because I give everything that I could give, but the frustrations that we couldn't bring that trophy to them uh, was, will always be with me. After that, 96, 97 season. So this is obviously before the the second of the League Cup finals. But between the the nature of the relegation, which you've said there, and, and missing out on in the two cup finals, it, it must take a lot to, to to come back from some a season that's taken so much out of you physically mm. and mentally, and mm. sort of come back and and get promoted again at the first attempt is is a massive achievement. Mm. Yeah, it was, and I'm smiling because I I'm proud of that. You know, I'm proud of that. I know a few of our players left. <clears throat> And, you know, that's what happens in football. And, and it was a great ride. And some of those star players left. Um, <clears throat> but the ones left behind were good, good, good players. Some good attitudes there. And uh, with a couple of good signings, Paul Merson, of course, being, being integral in uh, how we got promoted that season. No question. <clears throat> he provided the, the quality and the attacking part of it that, was, that we needed at that point. But, yeah. Yeah, we, we bounce straight back again. Not easy to do as we see in, in, in modern day football. It's not easy to do. And in Brian Robson, you know, again, a strong mentality, certainly a strong mentality in my sense and players that are ready to go again and roll up the sleeves and, and work for the team and the club again. And we did it and we did it. And, 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 and again, into another League Cup final again against Chelsea. So good season, positive season, good memories, promotion memories, celebrating, walk around the Riverside, this time clapping the fans because we've done it. I got some nice images of, of walking around, you know, after securing promotion. You know, football, is, there's a lot of downs in football. There's a lot of disappointments, particularly around that time when we'd done so well to, to fall at the last hurdle. And it just feels blimmin' nice 
to see smiling faces and happy faces with promotion. I think Gaz was around at that time. Uh, I, I can just, uh, you know, and, and, and as years go by, it gets a little tougher to remember the details. But, but at that, even at that point, I'd learned to enjoy and cherish the good moments because there's, you know, there often is not many of them. But yeah, fair play to us. Fair play to the Curtis Flemings and the Steve Vickers and the, all the guys, you know, the Higgies and all the ones that stayed around and sh shook off the disappointment and all the, the bad headlines and everything else to get to grips with the league again and to get promoted again. So yeah, well done by everybody. And I, I'm kind of pretty proud of that because it wasn't our fault that we got relegated. It was a club's decision to not to go to Blackburn Rovers. And it was those three points that took us down. But, uh, you know, a lot of those core of that team that got Middlesbrough promoted to the Premier League, uh, there's a core that's still there. And that was important in bringing the club back. Um, Paul Merson was, was an interesting character. And in some ways, difficult character, different character to manage and, and difficult, difficult character to train with sometimes with the issues that he had and he's admitted to. Um, but wow, what a talented player, you know, what a talented player. And some of the things he did during that season was, was pretty special. And I, and I, I gotta say, I was surprised at how good a player he was actually. I, I'm sure I played against him before at Arsenal. Um, but, but wow, he, he, he made a real impact with us and, uh, was a, was a big part of our promotion that season as well. Yeah. And do you think it's fair to say Brian Robson, he was obviously a, a really young manager at that point and he was learning lessons all the time and, uh, after that season to help establish the club in the Premier League what was as big as an achievement as, as he had in uh, Middlesbrough. Yeah, yeah, it was. Oh gosh, I mean, you know, with the following seasons and, you know, getting back there was, was a big deal, but we continued to struggle, didn't we? We continued to struggle. Time, you know, seasons kind of went through then and we kind of re-established ourselves and you're probably right, Brian Robson probably learned more about team balance and around this time we had so many players coming in, so many players coming in, uh, gosh, and so many good players. Andy Towns, I remember coming in, Paul Ince coming in, we had Gazza at a certain point, uh, gosh, Hugo Ekiog, God rest his soul, um, Gareth Southgate coming in, then, then, then getting into this point um, of that season. And we struggled, didn't we? We struggled to get away from the bottom part of the season. And Terry Venables came in at that time. And, and that's, a, that's a, a period that, that's quite strong in my memory, to be honest with you, for, for what he brought. I mean, we had, and I'll tell this story, and it's, um, <clears throat> it's such a, it's such a, no, not an important story, but it's something that sticks with me a lot. And I, have, I couldn't have more respect for Brian Robson, by the way, just in all this. Um, staff was Viv, Viv Anderson and Gordon McQueen at that time that had been around. The three of them have been in charge for, for, for quite a few seasons. And we'd gone through some ups and some downs. But that season, we, we struggled initially. Uh, we, had a, we had an awful um, start. We had a, an awful first half of the season, if I'm right. Again, I, I, that some of the, the specifics of the dates and stuff, I might be a little bit out. But we had a crisis meeting. And I'll never forget it. And it was a meeting where I guess the management unloaded on the players, unloaded on us. I mean, and, you know, and these things happen and, and, and sometimes you take it on the chin. Sometimes there's a little bit of back and forth, but this is another one of those. And I tell the story because I was involved in it and, you know, and what happened afterwards. Um, so Brian Robson had to go at us all in the dressing room and various reasons why we were struggling. Um, Viv Anderson and Gordon McQueen came on and said their thing as well. And a lot of it was like, you, 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 you're bottling it. You know, you're bottling it at home. And you're not this. And you're not doing this. And we should be doing that. And you, it, was, it, was, it was very pointed at the players. And I get that. You know, we, we've all had this. Listen, I, you know, I, but at the end of the, the rants from the three of them, there was Brian Robson then, then looks back and, and says to us all, what do you think? So... I was never a, never a loud guy in the dressing room, but I was always a, th always a thinker. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now. And I've been doing it for, for, for 12 years in the US here. And, I, you know, and I'd sit down with, um, I mean, well, I'm just fast forwarding a little bit. I'd sit down with Gail Southgate after training, doing X's and O's on a bit of paper. I'd knock on Terry Venable's door and ask him about certain things that we're doing in the team. So that's always been my way. So I, I put my, my little hand up. I said, well, for me, 
I just think we should be more organized. I think we should have more of a game plan. We should be more drilled. We should be more grooved on what we're trying to do. We should be a situation where every player out there knows what they're doing even more. And the response came back, fiery response from, from, from them all was, what do you want us to do? Move you around like Sabutio men on a field? And I, and I got fired down by the manager and, and Gordon, I think. And, you know, and I'm like, listen, it's just, you asked me what I thought and that's what I thought. Now, a few weeks later, Terry Venables comes into the football club and he did exactly what I said, basically. He, he, he took over the coaching side of it, pretty much totally. And he literally moved us around. He moved us around. He coached us out of that situation. And he moved me from the outside to inside here. And when he's moving there, he goes there, you come back there. Uh, he had me playing as a wing back for a period of time. And he, and he, and he kind of taught me wing back play in, in like a couple of weeks and my positions. And without raising his voice, Terry Venables, through pure coaching uh, and movements and understanding and learning and teaching of the team, he coached us out of that, that, that issue and out of that relegation problem for us to be safe in the league. And it, it, I guess it spelt the end of Brian Robson because I think one player was brought in to help that Dean Windass came in and did a good job. We had Christian Caramboa there at that point. I remember Paul Ocon. Actually, Venables didn't play me for the running for that, that season. And he explained exactly why. He wanted Paul Ince's leadership. He wanted Paul Ocon's passing ability. And he wanted Christian Caramboa's goal threat. That's the balance that he wanted. And, and, and I played at wing back a little bit. I think me and Curtis swapped at wing back a few times, but majority of times I didn't play in my midfield role. But that experience of, of a clever, smart coach calmly, and, and of course, there's going to be, a, there's going to be an, an uplift in players, maybe his mentality and attitude with a different guy coming in. There's, there's maybe a coach's bump. But what I saw that, that second half of the season um, was impressive to me. It really was. And I, and I did meet with him a few times to talk about certain things that were going on in the team. Fascinating guy, Terry Venables, an educator, um, a real teacher of the game. And sadly, in some ways, the end of that season, when we did stay up, and I, I, and I don't know whether you were there or remember, that's a long time ago, of course, now, but there was a, you know, a real round of applause and, and, and chanting and cheering for Venables when he came out to appreciate the fans, less so for Brian Robson, sadly. And I think there was a realisation there that, that maybe, you know, if the club wanted to move forward, they might have to make a change. And they did. And, uh, you know, that, that's when I think they tried to get Terry Venables full time. He, 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 he wouldn't or couldn't do it. And Steve McLaren came in for my, it would have been my last season then. So it, it's, uh, you know, I, I hope I'm saying that in full respect of Brian Robson and the coaching staff at that point, but it was a fascinating insight, to, or not an insight, an experience to, to see how different coaches work and, and what makes a coach special. Terry Venables is one of the best England coaches that's ever been. So I guess if somebody's going to find a way to put it right, it would have been him, maybe not many others. And, um, but no, but that, that was a very memorable period. Um, and I guess the end of Brian Robson and that coaching staff at that point and Steve Gibson, you know, made the change and Steve McLaren came in. Well, I think um, Steve McLaren's first sign-in as Middlesbrough manager was Gareth Southgate, right. which I think that you you got on really well with, mm. uh, as far as I'm aware. Um, mm. Just what what was what was Gareth like in in your you know your experiences with? Him? Yeah, I mean, just top. He's just uh, just a top man, just a top man. I think you know. I don't think I'm going to say anything here that people don't already know, but I'll certainly um, re-emphasize what an incredible professional he was. Um, the, the, one of the nicest guys I ever met in football. I, I was lucky enough to room with him that, that season together. So I got a real insight into his football brain, but what it was as a person, probably as much as anything else. And again, a, a little story. Um, of course, when any club, any player comes to sign for the club, they're often in the hotel, they're away from their family and stuff. And Gareth is no different. And I said to him, why don't you come, come over for dinner, get out of that hotel, come over for dinner. My, my wife, Caroline's an amazing cook. She'll, she'll do something nice for us. And so he did come over and he knew our two boys at the time, big football fans, Elliot and Lewis at the time. So he comes over for dinner and he brings a, a signed England shirt um, as a gift and as a thank you to, for our family. Just a, just a lovely gesture that, that my kids lit up when they see this England shirt signed by an England player, Gareth Southgate. So that's the sort of guy he was. Um, we taught football a lot 
a footballer, you know, the training ground from, from, from obviously around the games when we played. Um, and he was just a leader of men. Um, and there's other leaders of men, by the way, just quickly rewinding. Nigel Pearson, brilliant, brilliant captain. Uh, that stand out for me, obviously Brian Robson and Tony Mowbray. When I first went to the football club, Tony Mowbray, again, what, what a person, what a guy, what, you know, but anyway, um, but Gareth Southgate, yeah, smart, intelligent, emotional, dedicated, just, just top man. And when he got the England manager's job, absolutely not surprised that how he approached it and how his intelligence have helped try to, to bridge that gap of figuring out how to get the best out of players and to managing them and making them more comfortable or a better relationship with the media. Everything that he's done, you know, it is, it's been impressive, but it hasn't surprised me because that's the sort of guy that he, that he, that he is and he's a real leader. So that was a, that was a tremendous signing for the football club. What a great signing to get somebody like that in such an important position in the team really did give the, the club stability to go forward under uh, Steve McLaren. Just looking back then on, you know, as, as, as we draw to the end, to the end of your Middlesbrough career, as we run through it there, mm. just looking back on it in its entirety, I mean, you talk about different eras at a football club. It strikes me there that you mentioned Tony Mowbray and Nigel Pearson, Brian Robson, and then through to Gareth Southgate. You know, there's, there's, there's few, well, if any Middlesbrough players who would, be, who would have experienced that full Mm. transition from Harrison to the Riverside and to be so heavily involved all the way, all of the way through it. Mm. If you looking back, it must feel as though it did help put Middlesbrough on the map. Literally, it helped it, the, going from when you came in in 1990 to, to, to when, when you left the club in this new stadium, three cup finals later and the building blocks there for, for even more you know, success. That, that You must fill you with immense pride to look back on that. Yeah, I, I do. I do. And I'll tell you what, I mean, it's not, it's not a week goes by where I don't get some kind of social media reference or an old goal that gets scored. I think the club middles would do a great job of, of doing that. And, and on this day, 30 years ago, Robbie Musto signs. I had no idea until I see it on social media or some of the goals, you know, it's great. I mean, that sort of stuff is, is gold for me. Because we, as players, you don't keep stuff. Some of the photographs, some of the images, I can store them. I can save them. I can, you know, I've got a, 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 a folder in my Google Photos, but it's, it's basically called All About Me, where, where stuff that I pick up online is so nice. It's so nice. And, you know, the, 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 the area, I couldn't have wished to, to have spent more time in an area around Middlesbrough area and Teesside area, the, the people that love the game and they love their players and they remember their players. My two boys were born there. They, they I, I just couldn't, I can't speak highly enough for the area and for the, for the passion that football has there. I remember driving around the area and Linthorpe Road downtown and all that and, and seeing all Middlesbrough shirts, no other shirts, no shirts for the big, the big so-called big clubs in, in England. So uh, an incredible area, incredible area to, for my kids to grow up. And now, as I said, I, I see it all the time. And yeah, I, I'm so lucky that I can look back on a, a brilliant period of time, 12 year period at Middlesbrough. My testimony we haven't talked about again was, was, was immense pride um, to have that and to get the support of the club and the fans to, to come to those events and to do golf days with Paul Gascoigne and Roy Chubby Brown and to, to do sportsman's dinners and the game against Dortmund and, and everything else. I mean, what an amazing run. And I can, uh, and I tell you what, it helps with, you know, in days like this where a lot of former players have mental health issues, I'm so lucky that I can look back and my, 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 my memories and my thoughts are so positive for my career. I'm so thankful for that. Um, and, and there's a lot of reasons for that from family support to, to just, just the way that I was as a person. But I, I feel like I did pretty much all I could with my ability and with the help of the football club Middlesbrough, you know, we kind of, I always think we kind of went on this steady incline together. The club went to pretty good places and I, as a player, was able to stick with that you know we of course we know that if i wasn't able to do that i would have gone out the door in the first couple of years or three four five six seven years but be able to stick with that sort of player with that caliber of player that came into our club and 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 to play with and mix with international players and international captains in southgate and paul ince and to be around gaza and andy townsend a couple of the, the captain of the republic of ireland side was such a it's just it's just 
it, it it's just means a lot that I be, were able to do that. So I, I have, I'm lucky again, that I can look back on an amazing career um, in an area that appreciated me and I appreciate it. We were good for each other. That's how I'd summarize me and Middlesbrough. We were good for each other for a long period of time. And to see the transition between a stadium into the next stadium, I mean, it's pretty amazing to see. Now that's not to say there was a pretty, pretty good memory, a pretty good, uh, the club was, did pretty well before I got there as well, by the way. I know I had the difficult times in the 80s, mid 80s and stuff, but there was pretty good, I'm sure the fans that look back even further than that. There's been good Middlesbrough teams in the past, but but yeah, to, to come from Ayrson to Riverside and that run that we had and to be part of that was pretty special. And uh, again, the, the experiences, it's just that that final piece was missing, obviously the cup final win. Um, that would have, of course, would have been the icing on the cake but but wow what a what a great run what a great career and to get reminded of it nicely with with and people speaking nicely about me is it just means a lot and it's and, and, I, and i'm not surprised knowing the area knowing the sort of people that are there they appreciate and they remember the players that played for them i mean that's a long time now i mean 30 years ago when i signed i finished at 2002 i think it was after 1990 i signed there and I mean, wow, that's, that's a long period of time and a long time ago. And yet it still feels very fresh and I still feel very appreciated. But it, it really is reciprocal of, of my experiences on Teesside and playing my football there, making, I guess, my name at that club, which has enabled me to stay in the game and to, to talk about football every single week here on TV in a big, in a big kind of showcase situation. Um, I remember where I came from. I remember what this game has given me and uh yeah it, it's all good and I, I tell people i've never worked a day in my life i've played football for for nearly 20 years and now i talk about it as a career i did a little bit of coaching when i first came here at boston college which i loved as well but the broadcasting kind of took over um and and really all on the back of oxford united giving me my first chance and then middlesbrough football club taking me and making me a premier league player so that's you know where i'll be forever grateful